Hello and welcome to another episode of The Joy of Basel. Today we will be uh, painting the blackboard pitch base that we have been building in the last video. Uh, the grass mat that we have used is already um, has already quite some color to it, so we don't need to uh, paint, paint it green. But it is very important to really work out these, these little details that you see uh, in the grass. If you look at the reference, there are so many different little um, little things on the grass that are, that are more than just the grass. There are little uh, flowers uh, growing there, uh, little bugs flying around. A base like that is really, really good to emphasize all of the little things that you can find on the on a grassy turf like that. We will also paint the wooden structures that uh, we have built. Here we will try two different things. One is to create a look of a fence that has uh, been uh, repaired quite often, so the shades of the wood differentiate a little bit. And the second board is the scoreboard, or like the advertisement board. So here you will um, see a more homogeneous uh, type of wood, which is uh, rather soft wood, which has been weathered by the weather, by the sun and uh, by, by the weather quite extremely. So um, there will be no clean edges, everything will be a little bit worn down and there will be a lot of green and moss uh, on it. All of these things that would occur if you have a look at the real life infield reference of, of these, um, these objects. Okay, let's go straight to painting. Uh, I use um, a lot of colors from P3. Um, so here you can see uh, how I paint um, some bootstrap leather um, in a heavy base consistency onto uh, the, the mid plank. I've mixed in some Ordic olive because uh, a little green will always help to uh, make the wood look a little bit more realistic and uh, natural. Then I change uh, to some Idrian flesh. Um, again, it's a heavy base consistency and I just apply it um, onto the whole plank. Now for the, for the last board I use some sanguine base, again in the heavy uh, base consistency, and I mix in a little bit black uh, to the mix. But in this case I really want the board to look um, different, so um, yeah. I use some black to darken it down a little bit. Uh, here I use some Man of White base um, to lighten the color tone up a little bit and we apply that in the heavy layer, like medium layer consistency. Notice how I uh, hold the brush, it's very important to ground yourself, so to say, to, um, to the piece that you are about to apply the wood grain on. Uh, my fingers touch the base, um, the wooden base, where the plank is attached to, and um, I really try to make these little streaks that you can see here on my finger. Um, the brush tip is actually uh, not very sharp it's not a new brush um, it's very good to use uh, to use a brush that has um, yeah a little bit like a split tip for applying the first layers of grain with every step that we do we will get more fine and fine so um, it's actually good to have a split tip so you have um, a couple of strains of grain that are painted at the same time so to say uh, wood grain is really similar to human hair. Um, if you look at the blonde hair color, for example, um, there is it's not just one color. It's a, it's a mixture of different colors of different uh, brown tones. The mixture of the of the of the colors is what makes the tone natural and uh, gives it some depth. So this is exactly what we try to do here. We apply a lot of different uh, streaks of of paint. Although a single streak looks quite uh, thick, we will later go into this uh, with, with the shadow color and this will help to split the thick uh, strains up a little bit. 
That way we don't have to uh, paint uh, very fine or very precise. Um, we will allow the paint to do the work for us, so to say. Yeah, so here for the next highlight, I have used a little bit of Men of, Men of White highlight um, to even increase the light um, for the grain. I try to stay on the top part of the board um, and apply a, like a zenithal light that comes from above. But I don't overdo it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's uh, just a general, general light situation. Okay, so also for the other colors for Sanguine Base, I use a little bit of the uh, Men of White highlight to further increase the light. I try to paint streaks that are a little bit more fine than the ones that came um, earlier. So step by step I can build up the light by just adding more and more of the wood grain. The good thing is also since I use the same uh, highlight tone, you see that it doesn't make such a big difference, uh, the, the colors are more unified. Now I use some armor brown and then I darken down the bootstrap leather with a little bit of black and a tiny little bit of armor brown to give it a reddish tone. And this we will apply in a heavy glaze or like medium glaze consistency. That surface that we've created before, the highlight will now be broken up by the shadow tone with wood grain, with these, uh, with these lines that I paint on. At this stage you can also switch onto a brush that has a sharp tip, so a new brush. Um, I'm using a Winsor Newton Series uh, 1, uh, the regular size. It's good to use the regular size because the bristles are long and uh, therefore the color will um, flow a little bit better out of the brush onto the, the planks. Okay, here also the same um, shadow tone for the Idrian flesh uh, plank. Same thing as before, just a little bit black and a tiny little bit of tank uh, of armor brown. It was called uh, tank brown earlier, um, but Vallejo has changed the name, so it's a little bit confusing for me sometimes. But it's the same tone. Here you can see how I erase a little mistake that I made with using my uh, patented <laughs> gypsy brush. The gypsy brush is very useful for little um, mistakes that you make in, when you paint something. It's basically an old um, Winston Newton brush that uh, where, where the tip has separated entirely. So I cut off the tip and then I use it as a eraser brush but I also apply some um, techniques that we will be able to see in, in other videos that are yet to come. The consistency of the paint is quite thin therefore I, I can really tint the, the wood without painting too much of new uh, lines in, into the, um, the whole thing. I also try to apply that from, um, from the lower part Maybe you've noticed that I flipped the board. So we apply the highlight from the top and the shadow from the bottom. Okay, here I mix some, uh, some men of white highlight into, um, into the mix and we want the medium to heavy layer consistency. 
I have uh, flipped the board once again because now we are painting highlights again and this brush here it has to have a finer tip so um, yeah you can really paint more fine I'm not using a finer uh, size brush like a size zero or size double zero uh, because I really need a lot of paint in the reservoir of the brush um, to flow into the tip. A smaller um, brush would, would result in less color that is kept in the brush and therefore the really important thing is the tip and the heavy body in the bristles. And this motion, this uh, dragging motion or dabbing or like stroke motion is very important. It's something you can learn um, and practice, uh, not on the piece itself, but on somewhere else. You can work really fine with that, with some practice and um, yeah, apply both highlights and shadows. It's a very, very useful tip. Also again, notice how I connected myself to the base uh, with the finger. In theory, I touch the very ground with my finger because my finger is connected to my thumb, the thumb is connected to my hand, the hand is connected to the table, the table is connected to the floor. So um, I can minimize the, um, the shake if there is any. So now a little bit of uh, Moro White, uh, yeah, even further highlight, we're getting really fine here. Notice how the area that I highlight is also becoming very, very small, so only like the very top of the board where the light would hit. That being said, it's uh, important not to forget about these little cracks that we have uh, that we have chipped in with the uh, with the rusty pliers. They will get some light also. Since we use the same highlight, the base tone that was quite extreme in the beginning is only shining through uh, on some spots which is ideal because it gives the whole um, the whole piece a um, little bit like a, um, a more balanced uh, tone. See here I also glaze in um, some of the mid-tone once again over the highlights so it doesn't look so chalky and yeah get some of the saturation back. You can really come up with very interesting grain uh, patterns. Wood is very interesting depending on where you harvest it from. It can have a lot of very interesting swirls and all kinds of really, really interesting grain types. Again, I recommend consulting a book, a reference book about uh, wood types. Uh, that way you will be able to, to play with color tones and wood is really, really diverse. So. You can find nearly anything you can think of, brown tones and purples and all these things. Now I use some Vallejo Dark Yellow from the Model Wash um, series and we apply glazes uh, from the uh, dark yellow and the dark brown. These two tones are very, very nice because you can very quickly add some saturation or like some additional uh, color by glazing them in. You have seen the consistency, it's a uh, medium glaze. And you see I put it in below there on the plank, then I clean the brush um, and just use water to to allow the, the color to, to flow into the, uh, the upper part. I never um, paint into the highlight because that would just look uh, wrong. Yeah, I put it down there and then again, like clean brush, 
don't lick the brush because the color is can be quite uh, harmful to your health. You can quickly use some water and then use a paper towel to, to get rid of the excess moisture in your brush. All right, you see a nice satin shine with um, the green and the brown, really nice. You can do this step uh, again if you want to increase the, the shine or like here, um, if you want to add um, some, some, yeah, like depth or like moisture to certain parts that are still uh, connected to the, to the ground. After this step, it's important to increase the highlight once again. Do it very, very carefully and only from, uh, from the top of, of the planks. This is also the step where I use the Schminke Academy Acryl Color Titanium White. It's a very, very thick pastos acrylic color that helps to build the absolute last and final highlight. Also use the gypsy brush if you go overboard and just erase some of the mistakes that you might have done. And also you can add some of the dark yellow model wash to add additional tones. Now I use some Japanese uh, uniform from Mother Color for the for the more clean <laughs> version of the base. I mix it with the uh, bootstrap leather tone in a thick, um, like heavy base consistency. So we just cover the whole thing up uh, in one color, and I will show you how you can then um, bring some variation into these. Uh, these planks uh, without applying um, different colors on each and every single one of them that will create a like more um, unified uh, look. It's also good to have a hair blower uh, nearby that way you um, you will be able to clean that f um, that first layer up really quickly and the color needs to be dry before you apply the highlight. So this is the base tone again mixed with um, some men of um, white base. Just as you saw uh, earlier, it's applying uh, the wooden grain in these streaks, in these lines, motion. Connect yourself to, to the base well, and then just start with the paint flow. You don't have to be very precise at this point. Just bring in some, some brighter tone there. Leave some of the, uh, the paint that was there earlier. Um, let it shine through. And um, yeah, you will end up with something like that. Yeah, for the back view, um, we at this point we can keep the the light in mind. So we know that the light is coming from the top. So we can. Um, ignore the, um, the very lower part a, uh, a little bit. But now you can also see what um, the chipping of the board has done to um, like structure wise. Um, we have all these little pockets that will now catch the light really nicely. So the board will, uh, yeah, will look uh, really, really more interesting than a flat standard board.
Yeah, when you go lower, you can also uh, add a little bit more to base tone. So the board starts to be highlighted already in, on a global level. So you can see it here a little bit that the top planks are a bit ha uh, lighter than the bottom planks. And um, yeah, you can achieve that by just simply using a little bit more of the bass tone in the lower parts than in the, in the upper parts. Okay, here we have mixed a nice shadow tone by adding a little bit black and um, some bootstrap leather into the mix. Um, we have flipped the, the board around because we are now painting shadow tone and uh, we apply that in a light base or heavy layer consistency from the from the lower part of of each individual plank heavy heavy layer consistency I've also um, switched to the miniature series brush. You cannot see it um, here properly in the label um, because I forgot to uh, put it, but it's actually a short bristle brush. That way I will have more control over uh, where the grain is going and uh, it will look a little bit different than as if we had applied these lines with a um, regular Series 7 brush. Yeah, and then it's a back and forth. Um, it's applying a highlight and then applying shadow and then a highlight again. Okay, here we are glazing uh, some armor brown in a light glaze consistency or medium glaze consistency. And then we clean the brush and again we use water um, to use just a tiny little bit of the color to, um, to flow naturally to the top. This board I want to have it a little bit darker although these uh, this is all the same wood I kind of like that if you have a little bit more contrast on one board you know, maybe it's a special snowflake kind of board <laughs> has more weathering than the others for some reason or uh, maybe it's tilted in an angle that it catches more um, of the rain so it looks a little bit different it helps to make it a little bit more exciting than only the same board. Here we use the uh, dark yellow again from the Vallejo model wash. It is called dark yellow but it looks very very green also uh, and if you mix it a little bit with the dark uh, brown it has this really nice natural look that also reminds reminds me a little bit of moss or what happens with, um, yeah, with mossy surfaces. Really ideal for wood. Okay, we have uh, let this dry. Now we mix a little bit of the model white into the base tone and we start to uh, apply the sharp highlight on the top of the, of the scoreboard. We use these, um, these chipping edges for a nice uh, light situation and these little cracks that you see, we can also highlight them so they will catch the light from below not from above because they are like imperfections in the wood and um, yeah the light would gather it looks better if the light collects on the lower bottom of the crack and here the super fine very very careful highlight on the very top of these edges of these um, chips. 
Uh, often people make the mistake that they dilute the color at this step too much. As you can see, the color is still at a medium layer, maybe consistency. It's, it's not very thin. Therefore, it covers, and that's a good thing for the wood grain. If it was too transparent, uh, it would just not look good. Very blurry. Here we switch the brush again to a um, miniature series, size 7, uh, size 1, sorry. With this we apply the very, very final highlights. It's the lines though, so, and we have not used uh, the Schmincke uh, titanium white which we can do like see here uh, in not not like lines but rather in in dots and here you can see how i use the side of the brush not the um, not the uh, the tip um, if you have a easily accessible um, edge, you can use the side of the brush and that will make your life more easy because um, the lines will get straighter than uh, if you use the tip. All right, that's that's it. We will have a look at how, how this whole thing looks in the base. Really, really cool. We switch back to the board. I painted the the back sides of cam. It's the same thing as you saw um, with the front. Yeah, also looks really nice from the tone. Now um, I have some pig iron from P3 um, that I use um, to cover these little nails, and I will use some Mithril silver from Games Workshop for the highlights. Um, it's a color that's not available anymore, but uh, Actually, I just use it um, because I don't want to throw the, the pot away. You can use, um, for example, chrome from um, Vallejo, um, Vallejo color. Just a very, very high, um, high silver is just good. And here, just a tiny little reflex point on the top of these little nails will do the trick. Okay. This looks good. Now we will have to give some more definition to the grass. The grass already looks quite good, but um, it's really, really nice to see um, to see all these little grass things to, to pop up. So we need some jack bone and some man of white highlight, and we will dry brush these onto the very tip of uh, the bristles of the grass. I think they're called differently, not bristles, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, you see, I do it very gently. I only want to to have color on the very ends of the grass and not all over the place. Don't worry about grass falling off your base at this point. What will not stick to your base uh, will fall out anyway sooner or later. So. And here I use even a brighter white. It's a, it's the Moro Moro white, and I apply it with a um, Series Seven size two brush because it holds more color. Um, not the not the dry brush. It's, it's a little bit like a, just a, just a highlight, and I apply it in a medium uh, layered uh, consistency. Yeah, now if you compare it, you can really see that the, the grass looks a little bit more sun-worn and um, that is what we were trying to do. It has more definition, looks a little bit like 
HD, if that makes sense. So together with the with the pitch fence, it looks really really nice. Okay, in order to apply um, little numbers and um, actually <laughs> the score onto the scoreboard, I decided to try some of the blood bowl transfer um, sheets that come with the mm, the starter box from Blood Bowl. Um, you can also print your own water transfer um, sheets, but it's a little bit more sophisticated. So why not just use the ones that come with the box? I um, soak them in water and then I use a brush to get them off the, uh, the paper and just put them right where I want them to be. There are also different mediums that uh, help you to solve the, um, the plastic um, or like the the paper, the transfer paper, but I don't need it. At this point they are very small. Here I have um, prepared little paper or little textile from this um, copper sheet. It's very very thin, a fraction of a millimeter. We use our hand drill to uh, drill in little holes where we will put nails into. It is really a little bit crazy <laughs> the amount of detail that we are applying here but you know these these little labels they have to stick to the board somehow so um, nailing them seems like a very quick solution and something that would would be done in reality too so yeah why not do it like that so here we have primed them with some white and we use some uh, armor brown um, in, a, in a light glaze consistency to add um, something like a paper texture <laughs> or like a little shade to them. I um, apply the color and then I clean the brush and then I um, paint um, something like a shadow um, in these little folds. It's hard to see because it's, um, it's very <laughs> You know, we use very bright lights to film this and therefore um, white comes out overexposed. But um, yeah, you will see it uh, when you uh, when you take a look. Um, when I tilt it around, you can see uh, what I've painted. Less is really more, so sometimes the color that is still in your brush is enough to make a little shade. Here we're using the loaded brush technique. Um, for this we load the, um, the body of the brush with a color. Then we take a little bit of the titanium white, of the pastel white uh, onto the tip. And then we mix the, uh, the, col the two colors. We blend them on the surface. And as the, the white is um, like connects to the surface, the color that is in the back of the brush floats to the front and um, yeah creates this blending right on the surface again it's a little bit hard to see um, there will be more videos coming with um, where this technique is uh, explained a little bit more precise here we are um, applying the, the lettering onto the, um, the labels I want to make them appear as if someone has uh, drawn them on by hand, so it is okay that they look a little bit clumsy. Um, you know, maybe some halfling has uh, taken a letter and a brush and has just applied that, these letters there. It's very wise to um, know exactly what word you want to write on the label before you do that, and then to start with the first and the last letter. Therefore, you will make um, make it less likely that you will run out of uh, space. So here we have the word home. So the H is the first one, the E the last, and then we paint the two letters in between that. 
it's uh, very useful because it's very very hard to estimate how um, much space these letters will take you could in theory sketch um, sketch them in with a pencil and then draw them over with with your paint but this method here is um, quite quick and I think quite practical home sweet home there it is so that's the home team uh, label and here I do the away team label for the team that comes and visits and as our sign is cut um, on the base I don't have to write in the Y of away because it is already the end of the of the sign okay so the score is three to one for our team hooray we're winning <laughs> um, yeah, this is how it looks. You can also correct little uh, mistakes uh, with the bass tone, but it tends to look a little bit artificial, so yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. I also painted the turn earlier and I kind of liked it with some regular paint, so it looks more like a, like a sign that has been improvised. All right, and see, we see here that the miniature really looks good on the bass, um, with also the little ball. It's very important to apply some satin varnish at the very end of um, when you when you put on these uh, wet transfer um, uh, yeah labels on because they have a shine to them. Um, the, the the foil that holds them has a shine, and we can eliminate the shine with some varnish really quickly. Okay, so this is how the two bases look. Um, now, the last thing that we need to do, when we remember the reference correctly, we really want to add some, some of these little, little plants and this foliage. So, what I use usually there is um, things that I find in the nature and I store in my green bits box. Here, for example, these are um, brush bristles from a painting brush so you just need to buy one and then you have a lot of them for a very long time um, just keep in mind that it's good to have some that look um, not so regular so usually the cheaper brush uh, will give you more joy <laughs> for a longer time and the other little plants are just um, things that I have found when I walk around I always have a look on the ground and when I see something that is dry and lays on the floor, I just take it with me. It's funny because when we were at the game stay, uh, we were in a restaurant once and all of the miniature nerds, they went straight for the um, table decoration because it uh, consists of these, um, of these dried flowers. Yeah, spot the nerd. <laughs> all right, um, here you, I apply uh, one of these longer uh, plants because it will help to emphasize um, the the verticality of the space and all right that's it thank you very much
Oh, <laughs> oh,